Hey friends, Michael Dieterich here. I'm just a poor boy. Thanks for joining me. I've got a great video for you today. When I was in the middle of the lockdown this winter in January, February, I had just moved into my new apartment. I just started painting again. I was trying to get back into the swing of things that my studio was set up and I was looking for inspiration. And I was looking at all these online challenges. Now, when I think of challenges, then people think of like the ice bucket challenge, which raised a lot of money. And then you've got just, I would say, stupid challenges like cinnamon challenge and Tide Pod challenge. Ugh. But I saw that my friend Sasha Hudemacher, who's a brilliant musician, he was doing collaborations with other musicians. I've known him for years as a musician, an improv musician, and during lockdown, he started improvising pieces, and then he started really focusing more and more on composition. Great neoclassical composer. Um, he's been putting his stuff on Spotify. He's on featured playlists. Absolutely brilliant. And I thought, oh, maybe we can inspire each other. So I came up with an idea, and uh, you can find a playlist for the entire process. It was called the Piano Poor Challenge. Basically... Each of us made a piece of art for the other. I made a painting for him and he wrote a song for me. And then each of us took that piece and was inspired to make a new piece. So he wrote me a song and that song, I had to make a painting based on that song. And I gave him a painting and he had to make a composition based on it. It worked out brilliant. If you're interested in that, it's a very, very fun process with lots of updates. Check out that playlist. I am a member of several Facebook acrylic pouring groups, and in one of the groups, a woman named Brenda Severson, she had mentioned these do, do's and don't challenges that acrylic pourers are doing online. I've seen many of them. Uh, they're fun. So the do's or don't, don't challenge, this is what happens. Two acrylic pourers, they challenge each other. Uh, one of them says to the other, I want you to do a painting in this style, this technique, and here are three things that you must do, and here are three things that you can't do, yeah? And then each of you get these assignments, these challenges with these guidelines, and you pour. So uh, Brenda, she asked me to do a flip cup. Uh, my dues were, number one, it had to be a minimum of 16 by 20 inches. That's metric 40 by 50 centimeters. Uh, number two, my piece had to contain negative space. And number three, I had to use a metallic color. Now, my three don'ts were don't use more than five colors, including my base. Don't tilt more than three times total. And don't use any silicone. So it was great to have these guidelines, which help steer you, and these limitations, which also, the word limit, uh, it's not what I want to say, but it kind of focused you in where you were going to look. So last night I had time and I went up to the studio and this is the result of that challenge. Alrighty guys, let's get straight into this. I already mentioned in the intro, but a special thanks to Brenda Severson for issuing this challenge. Let's just remind you what Brenda's challenge was. Um, she challenged me to do a flip cup and my three do's were, uh, it had to be on a minimum 16 by 20 inch canvas in metric that's uh, 40 by 50 centimeters. It had to contain negative space and it had to contain a negative, uh, sorry, a metallic color. And the don'ts were, um, I was not allowed to use more than five colors, including the base. I'm only allowed to do three tilts maximum. And for clarity, a, a tilt is if I pick up the canvas and I manipulate it and set it down, once I've set it down, that tilt is completed. So I can only do that three times, yeah? And finally, no silicone. So those are the, except for the flip cup, those are the six requirements. Now, the first requirement is quite easy. I have it here. I'll put it down uh, in a moment. This is my canvas. It is a... Uh, 20 by 20 inch or 50 by 50 centimeters. So I've already checked off the first requirement. Yeah, I've prepared this already with uh, black. It's a little bit here in the, the middle. It's empty and I've done the sides and everything because black's going to be my base color. It's one of my five colors as well. And that's just to help me ensure the negative space. But until we've done the pour, I can't check that off my list yet. 
Let's skip real quick to the don'ts because she said a maximum of five colors, including the base. So I'm going to put the official paint colors up in the screen. I have for you here my five colors. Uh, most of these are Amsterdam colors. Uh, everyone knows that's what I love. I have uh, my deep gold. I have the uh, turquoise as well from Amsterdam. Turquoise blue. I love that they call it turquoise blue, like it needs an extra explanation. This is a custom color um, because everyone knows, well, I don't know if you know that, I keep saying that. Greenish blue is one of my favorite colors from Amsterdam, but for this case, I thought it was just going to be a little bit too dark for the contrast with the black. So I have this left over uh, from last year. This was for a custom pour for Seville. Shout out to Seville, my lovely patron. Um, I still have this teal color left over. So I mixed those together and I got this lovely, I, I'm almost going to call it like a petrol color. It turned out just uh, perfect. Uh, also from Amsterdam. Now this is the Amsterdam uh, Pearl Blue. Now you can't tell it. People go, what is the blue? Well, it's funny because when I look at it in the light, I can see the shimmering and you get this blue iridescent kind of shimmer color. Um, Amsterdam has several of these. It's a great color to use in your pores if you're like, oh, I always say white, white, white. Um, it gives you the white, but it gives it a little bit something special. And finally, I have my favorite black, Lamp Black. Now, this color here, um, I, I mix two colors together to make a custom color. So I'm, I am officially pouring with five colors. Oh, I've taken these out of the, the shot five colors. This is made out of two colors, but um, it's still officially I'm painting with five colors today. Now, you won't be able to tell yet, but I'm hoping on the screen later you can, but I'm not allowed to use silicone. No problem. I'm one of those people that I go, you know, usually if you do a flip the right way, especially with a little bit of dirty pour in there, you will get some anyway. But I wanted to find some way. She wanted that metallic. I have the gold. I added. Now, this is a product I bought for a custom pour for a friend of mine, um, another shout out, Mariska Hartfeld. Um, she wanted a painting. I tried four different techniques in her colors and she loved them so much that she bought all four, God bless her. But I was talking about, she wanted these metallics in it. So I went for this acrylic varnish metallic. And the problem was I did a little test on another piece and yeah, it's definitely got a metallic shimmer to it, but it's, it's too metallic. It's like, the varnish isn't clear anymore. It's like gray and silvery, and it's like this is taking away from the picture. But I figured out that I can take this acrylic varnish and just add like a tablespoon uh, into a mix and kind of replace some of the, the glue in my pouring medium, and then I get some metallic. So even though these aren't like strong metallics like gold or silver, you will see later a nice metallic shine. So that's what I added in there and there. There's no oil in this, no silicone, so I did not use the uh, silicone. Um, but this will hopefully help tie the metallics together. So we've checked off the size of the canvas. It's here, it's ready to go. It is a flip cup, so I am gonna do a flip cup. Now, on a canvas this big, the thing about flip cups is, I found that the bigger the cup, the bigger the chance that your paints will muddy. And on a canvas this big, I was like, yeah, I could use one of those big cups to do. But what I've discovered instead to get an interesting effect and an interesting shape is instead of doing one big flip cup, I am going to do five small ones, yeah? Now, I'm gonna do these outer four, stack them exactly the same way, and I am going to Oh, let me pull that in so you can see. And I'm going to do them exactly the same way. Uh, I'm going to just layer them like a, uh, a, a clean uh, cup, not dirty. But I'm going to do the middle one a dirty pour. Um, after I've flipped them all and I've pulled this first one out, I made some extra gold. And I'm going to do a little bit of lining in between the cups so that when I let them go, hopefully... I'll get a nice little shape. I'm, I'm experimenting with something. It is a challenge. I thought, well, let's make it a real uh, challenge for myself as well. So I'm going to move this back before I check the balance and everything. I'm going to pour my cups first. So in my four outer cups, 
I'm going to start with black, which will be the last color to come out if everything goes right. Yeah. Okay, so those are my first four cups that are going to be identical. Now, because this gold is such a nice, beautiful color, in the middle, if black's this uh, negative space, I was like, do I want black in the middle and on the outside? I was like, no. Uh, so I'm going to go for my good old standby friend, gold. Um, and I'm going to put that in the, the uh, center cup first, because as most people know, but maybe you don't, that the first color you put into the cup will of course be the last color to come out. Now I put in less of the white than the black and that's because I, this white is like a nice accent color. It gives contrast, but I don't want it to be too dominant. I really want it to be about the black outer space, the nice shine of the gold, and I want it to be about these two blues next. Because I have the two blues, and you go, is there a right or wrong order? No, but I find that your paintings become more interesting this way when you switch back and forth between especially light and dark. So I just went for this white. I have this dark blue and the light blue. Now, of course, I could also do the light blue because it's also in contrast, but it's a lot closer to the white than it is to the darker so that's why I'm going for this darker one first but again there's no really wrong answer so I had this gold here first and let me just go back to that real quick for a moment I'm gonna go after that gold I'm gonna give this one a little bit of white again a little bit more this time the reason why I want that white is I'm doing this dirty pour but Blue, together with gold, can sometimes have the reaction like blue and yellow does because, yeah, gold is the closest to yellow and you get a little bit of a greenish tint. And I don't want that if I can help it. So I'm trying to separate that with the white or the black every time. Yeah? So now I'm here. I'm going to go on to my light blue is the next color. This time with that white in there, I am going to just continue on over here. Now in this one, I'm going to go back and put the darker blue in there as well. And here's where it gets the black. And now all the cups have actually officially, if you've been paying attention, every cup has had a dose of all the colors. We are now going into these ones again. I'm going to go for a little bit of uh, black here. Now, even though I thinned down my paints, I'm noticing now that they're maybe a little bit thicker than usual, but they'll be fine for a flip cup, uh, especially if I let them sit. But it's making this idea of the dirty pour in the middle a little bit harder to realize because the paint's not... If it's more fluid, then the paints can mix a little bit more. But I'm not worried about that because it's going to be great anyway. Um, but it's just something I'm noticing uh, in advance. That's lovely. So now I have.
have some of this black left over. I'm going to keep it. Uh, and that's going to be my middle cup. Yeah, I'm just going to put that over to the side real quick. I just want water here. And I'm going to end off with, in the four other cups, some of the gold, leaving a little bit left over for me. Great, and those are my four colors. Now this black that I have on the side, I'm gonna put it over here with my water. For this gold, here's the interesting thing. I have a kind of idea what I wanna do with this. Um, and I'm gonna keep it as a little bit of a surprise, but that feels from what I wanna do, sorry, I'm talking a little bit louder because I'm walking over to my supplies, a little bit thick still. So, one of the things that, uh, a little tip that I want to give people today is, when your paints are too thick and you want to thin them out, you know, people always like, oh, water, water, water. Well, water is not always the best thing in the world for your paints. However, there are some products out there, like this is a ready-made, they call it all-in-one pouring medium that they sell here in Holland. And I gotta tell you, it's way too watery. You end up using five parts water to one part this. It's just like, it's not good as a pouring medium. It is good though, to, it's like an additive as well. So sometimes when I'm adding water, and that's what I did today as well, when I was thinning out my paints and added the water, then um, I didn't always put just water, I did this. So real quick, my recipe today for the paints that you saw, my pouring medium was 70% PVA glue and 30% water, yeah? And of that 30% water, I'm gonna say that about 10% of that water was this. Once that was mixed up to make my five individual colors, I did a uh, one to, uh, sorry, a two to one ratio. Two parts pouring medium to one part paint. And then I, would um, add, add a little bit more water or this to get it to the right consistency. So this gold, for the purposes I want, I want it to be able to pour a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this pouring medium and stir it in just so I get this thinner pourable consistency. The only things that I now need to be concerned about with the flip are, number one, that I leave negative space, and number two, that I do a maximum of three tilts, yeah? Now, because I've moved this, I checked it later, and I think I know what I have to do already, but I want to make sure that my canvas, it's, I've sprayed it, it's nice and taut. Perfect. Thank you. Great. That's level. So my main cup's going to go in the middle. That's a piece of cake. I find, especially with a pour like this, um, if the cup is pretty full, number one, these ones are okay, but if the cup is pretty full, and especially for like this dirty pour effect that I was talking about that I didn't get, I'm not going to worry about that. I am going to just do the old-fashioned uh, slammer, yeah? It's like a shot. Great. People go, oh, something came out. It's all going to come out anyway. It's no big deal. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at these cups because one of the things is I want the gold near uh, away from the um, the cup and I'm on it fairly close and then the last cup yeah I'm still gonna do it with the left hand great now because the paints were a little bit heavy as I said I am gonna let them uh, sit now here's my little golden idea and again, I think it's actually going to, most of it's going to get swallowed up anyway. But I'm going to take my gold and I'm going to pour it right along the edges of these cups here. So, I'm just simply going to start with my middle cup first and I'm going to go straight up, yeah? So, I'm going to take a pin and... Poke one, two, 
You don't really need that many, but I like to have it released. And as I said, I'm pushing down kind of hard right now. I don't want the seal to release. And I'm going to go straight up. Here we go. Yeah, that is very thick. Woo! That is super thick. Oh, my Lord. So maybe this gold idea might work because of that. Oh, oh, oh. So now suddenly this idea of I only get three tilts, Brenda, woo, it's become a little bit scary. Now, some people would say, are you going to go ahead and torch now? Now, I don't have any silicone, so I'm like less afraid of that as well. But I think I'm going to wait because I'm not quite sure what's going to happen yet. Yeah. So uh, why did I put those pins away? Let's start with this one the furthest away. Might as well. Wow, that is thick. So hopefully I'm going to be able to tilt enough off of there and still maintain the negative space. I'm going to have to go corners. Sorry, I'm thinking as I go. Uh, this is a very fun challenge. Thank you for this, Brenda. I hope you're having fun with your pour as well. I did messenger her this morning, and she said uh, she thought she'd have time this afternoon to do her. So here we go. So I will tell you, uh, for those of you who have been watching lately, you probably noticed that I've been having, since I moved into my new place, I'm looking and I think I've figured it out and I'm going, yeah, I got it. But boy, I've just been not getting my paints to the right consistency. And for some reason, when I'm mixing, I go, oh, I got it. And I go, okay, thinner this time. And I go, yeah, there we go. And then I look and I'm going, how thick could this paint possibly be? It's just incredible. And I could feel it when I'm going with the cup. I'm like going, paint, are you coming out or not? I'm going to go a little bit faster with this one. I will say, though, God, what beautiful colors. So I'm not worried about that. I'm just interested later, like, am I going to be able to get any tilting done but that does mean one good thing and that is i don't have a problem with negative space later okay here we go next Grab more this time it's going to be very interesting tilting That looks like a peacock feather. Oh my lord, that's lovely. So, keeping in mind, now, maximum three tilts and keeping negative space. So, my negative space is definitely going to be here in the middle anyway. I'm so interested to see how this moves. I'm looking which is closest that one. So I'm going to work on the, the diagonal uh, and keep shifting it back to center. Of course, this is going to start moving in, but hopefully there'll still be enough negative space. So here we go. Officially, this then starts tilt number one. Great. Bring it back. Might as well, while bringing it back, 
go straight on to the opposite diagonal. Great, shifting it back towards the center. And I'm really conscious of the maximum three tilts. I know I'm on one, but like, because there's the paint is so thick and there's so much of it as well, the canvas is kind of heavy. And like, if there wasn't for these rules, I would probably set it down real quick and just take a little break, but now I can't. Brenda for tilt one. Whew. I gotta say, it's pretty cool looking. And now I'm wondering, do I want to add this black or, because there's going to be something cool about this effect of the painting in the middle being like raised from the negative space. Um, I really like that I put those extra gold bands in. This one's a little bit big, uh, but it's, yeah, again, it's, it's a minor minor uh, complaint um, that's all it is just a minor complaint Final tilt. That's it. That's the end of that tilt. guys it's the next morning i just came upstairs here is the finished piece now it's not 
completely dry yet. So I'm still keeping my fingers crossed. Because the paint was thick, one of the problems that happens with thick paint is often cracking. But as I'm looking, there is still just absolutely no cracking. Some of these areas are drying perfectly. The black has smoothed out uh, a lot better. There is a little bit here of waviness. This one a little bit as well. And the back side, that's the one place where I go, oh, that's a little bit of a bump. But with this piece, if I put a resin finish over it, I don't think you're gonna see any of that because the rest, it just turned out beautifully. The color combination, I'm gonna put a quick picture here uh, because I often go to Pinterest to inspire me. And when I knew that Brenda wanted me to do a maximum five color using a metallic, I really just went in and I typed black and gold color palettes and I got this picture. Now you'll see I used, not it completely here, but I mean, this painting and those, that picture could definitely be relatives. So I'm gonna let this dry some more um, and then I'm gonna do resin coating. But as far as the challenge goes, I am really, really pleased. And again, thank you, Brenda, for the challenge. I'm super excited how this turned out and um, I can't wait to see when it's actually dry and when the resin is done. So thanks for watching, everyone. This is Michael Diederich. I'm just a poor boy. See you soon.